master sets you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. He ain't asking you to be of this thing. He's asking you to trust him so he can show you how. If you're going to walk in what I teach, you have got to make it your foundation. How to love you. Oh, that's the life. He's just on the most challenge. As he is, so are we. Welcome again to Jesus. This answer means we're all paying off after lost. <laughs> I'm telling you, Satan. Woo! God's word is delicious. And I'm teaching on an established heart, part two. Listen, Psalm 112 says that surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. The uncompromising righteous. He should not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, unchanged, and trusted in the Lord. Trusted in the Lord. His heart is established, and he shall not be afraid. When your heart is established in Jesus, you are not going to be afraid of evil tidings. Bad reports. Something that didn't go right. You, 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 when, when your heart gets established, you will trust the Lord that he's going to come through and, 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 and do what's necessary for you to live in Jesus' victory. Amen. And so we, we was teaching yesterday, and I want to pick it back up today, uh, that one of the most, uh, I believe, left out things that is so important and vital to the walk of a Christian is people don't understand that by your words, you're going to be justified. By your words, you're going to be condemned. It's, it's, it's your words, you know, and, and, and sometimes people real loose with their words. They be telling you they're going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do, and they don't do that. It's just like they... Just act like they don't have to remember nothing they said. You ought not say something you ain't going to do. You ought not give somebody your word that you're going to do something and then turn around and don't do that. If you give your word, you ought to keep it. Amen. That's amen anyway. And so <clears throat> Jesus spoke of people in Matthew 15, verse 8, these people draw nearer to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. God want our hearts established on coming to Jesus, hearing what Jesus say, and believing and speaking, and doing what the Lord Jesus tells us to do. He want our hearts established on that. Mary was established on that. She wasn't even born again. Whatever Jesus say, do it. See, her heart was established. Whatever he say, do it. She, she knew in her heart that that baby came from the power of the Holy Ghost. She knew she hadn't been with no man when Jesus was born. And when he got 30 years old and was baptized and anointed, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Uh, 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 and, and this was his first miracle. He turned water to wine. And it, he turned it to win by somebody believing whatever he say, do it. And he'll turn your situation around. <laughs> What's meant for evil in the good, if you, whatever he say, do it. And so we have to learn and be taught that your words are going to produce what your words are saying. Whether it's good or bad, whether it's evil or good, whether it's holy or unholy, righteous or unrighteous. And so Jesus said that, that it's what go out of the man. It's what comes from the heart, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uh, all these things that evil, they come from the heart of man and they come to the mouth. Jesus said here, we pick it back up in, in Matthew 12. Well, let me just read uh, Matthew 15. I want to just read that and make sure you got it. But those, verse 18, but those things which proceed out of the mouth 
come forth from the heart and they defile the man. See? And so when, you, when you're in bondage, you, your mouth is going to tell on you. You're going to go tell somebody. That, and I'm not talking about when you're seeking to get counsel. But people be bringing their stinking darkness to other people instead of going to Jesus and learning how to believe and receive from the Lord. Don't tell you how to bring your doctor because you come in to get counsel to not walk in there. People will bring their darkness to you. Why? Why? Because they ain't learned and got their heart established. They gonna have what they say. Jesus said, verse 19 in Matthew 15, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. See, you keep washing your mind with the word. You keep speaking the word against those thoughts and bring them into captivity under Jesus. You'll eventually not have those thoughts no more. Man, I'm telling you, the devil whooped on me the first nine months I was saved. About going back to you drugs and 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 and, uh, and after nine months I haven't had a thought since. That's good. How did you do that? I kept feeding up on the word. I kept casting down those thoughts and imaginations and those lies. They were exalting themselves against what the Lord had done for me. I brought them into captivity to the obedience of Jesus. And you bring those in the captivity to the obedience of Jesus with your words. <laughs> and after that, this gets in your heart. Of, 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 that's why you have to turn to, to be converted so the Lord can heal you where th that don't even tempt you no more. You can do this in every area. I just hardly don't, you know, I mean, I just don't get a lot of crazy thoughts. And the ones I get, I just, I mean, I cut their head off. Any, and anything against, any animosity against anybody, I won't accept it in my thinking. I'm going to walk in Jesus' love. And I know Jesus, I judge every day. He died for one, all were dead. He died for one and died for all. So that I'll never live, henceforth live unto myself, but unto him that died and rose from the dead. My whole life is centered around hearing Jesus, believing and speaking, and doing what the master tell me to do. Every day. Now, I'm not going to live like this. See, see, see how I talk? Well, I'm Pascal, you know, you know ain't none of us perfect. See, now, see how you talk? If you talk like that. See, I don't talk like that. Well, we all humans, huh? Now, the Jesus in me is greater than the human nature. And he'll teach you how to live and walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of your flesh. And so the, all these things, all out of the heart proceed evil thoughts and murderers, adulterers, fornicators, thieves, false witness, blasphemy. You can't go steal from somebody if you don't get a thought. You can't talk about people unless you get a thought. And that thought is your heart. In, in Matthew, we go back now, we was on this chapter, Matthew chapter 12. Let's pick it up. Jesus said in verse 30, for all generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? See, speak, see, they couldn't speak nothing good about Jesus. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker. Jesus said a good man out of the good treasure of the heart, Bring us forth good words. Things is words. And an evil man out of evil treasure bringeth forth evil things, evil words. See? You, you, you can sit around talking talk about the government, talk about, you're always going to be able to find something wrong with somebody. But you're not going to find nothing wrong talking about Jesus. And I'm not telling people that when the Lord lead you to deal with something you deal with. <clears throat> what I'm telling you is that what's wrong with people should not be what's on your mind any day. You should not go to work 
with, 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 with how your boss did you yesterday. You go with your mind fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Ready to go love your boss. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them. Pray for them. Love them and pray for them. Which despitefully use you and persecute you. You want to bring Jesus into every situation that you have in your life. Jesus said a good man out of good treasures heart brings forth good words. Good things. An evil man brings out of the evil treasure his heart. Brings forth evil things. Out of the evil treasure, treasure, the treasure is your heart, brings forth evil things. But Jesus said, but I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Don't that, don't that, don't, don't that bother you, son? One of the things you got to do is, man, you, you got to make sure you don't hang around people who be talking about people like dogs. And they, they, they don't, they don't come around me because I, I'll rebuke them. You know, I'll speak of them, say something. Amen. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. Useless. Your words can make you a blessing to others. But your words can cause you to be useless to others. Also in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 uh, listen to this this is the Lord he, he really dealt with these issues let verse 29 let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth and really rotten and putrid words no, don't let them proceed out of your mouth what, what am I going to talk about it? That which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister the ability of God's love to the hearers. If you're not bringing God's love and power and who Jesus is and what Jesus did, you need to hush. We need to make sure we're ministering Christ. We are talking about how great he is. We're talking about what how Jesus took our sins away, how he overcame. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. In Romans chapter 12, verse 21, it says, uh, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, let that talk about it. See, God wants your heart established <clears throat> where you don't let evil overcome you. You don't let what people say, what people do to you. You don't even let when you miss it overcome you. You don't let your struggles, your weakness overcome. You overcome them with good. Jesus is the good. The Bible says in James chapter 1, James chapter 1, it says in verse uh, uh, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow turning. See, and then you go, but overcome, be not overcome of evil. No, never let evil win. But overcome evil with letting something come down from heaven. That was Jesus. Overcome evil with Jesus. Jesus bringing you love. Jesus bringing you forgiveness. Hallelujah. If you're being treated evil, overcome that with good. Let your heart be established that Jesus defeated the devil. Let me show you something in Ephesians chapter 2, verse, verse uh, uh, 11. 2, there it is. Uh, verse 12. That at that time, you were without Christ. Now, <laughs> now think about this. And see, when you when we were without Christ, it was rough. Let me show you how it was when we were without Christ. We write there in Ephesians. Look at chapter uh, 4, verse 17. 
This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their man. You could put heart right there. In the vanity of your thinking. Having the understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of the heart. Since your heart can get blinded. The Lord has had over the years... I've been walking with the Lord since 1988, June 30th. Your heart can get blinded as a born-again believer. It is not your spirit. It is a part of your soul, the seed of your will. It can get deceived. And, and it's telling them uh, that through ignorance, because of the blindness of their heart, and if you, if the word blindness, uh, if you look over in your margin, uh, it'll tell you that that, 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 that blindness is a heartness. The blindness of the heart. And it's a heartness. Because you always, your heart is always going to get hard when you refuse to make the proper decisions to do what Jesus tell you to do. Your heart becomes callous. Look, look, look now. Who being in, in past feelings, giving themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. And then you go to verse 20, but you've not so learned Christ. Saints, <laughs> our whole life as Christians should be based on learning who Jesus Christ is what Jesus Christ did and how to, to trust Jesus to show us how to live this every day. A Christian's life should never be hard. Sure, we face things that feel hard, but we are going to have to quit making the world and all it's got to offer greater than our God. I'm telling you, your words you need an abundance that God is greater, that God uh, uh, knows everything. Jesus got this figured out, and he already got a way for us to escape if we are trust him. Now you go back to Ephesians 2. This is, this is just astounding teaching here. That, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. I get this, where God said he would do this for us. We didn't have that. Having no hope, no way to expect God to do nothing, and without God, his love in the world, without it, without his forgiveness, without his redemption, without his peace, without his joy, without his strength, without his grace, in the world. We was without him. I lived for years without him. But now, oh, oh, glory to God. Oh, I tell you, this is good news. But now, now, oh, hallelujah. Now, no, 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 you're going to quit letting the devil keep you in your past. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off, I may not by the blood of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. See, see what? What? He's doing something for you. Look, for he is our peace, who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having the bodies in his flesh, the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, to making himself of twine, one new man, and so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And so we can see we got to be speaking words where we have hope now. We have a savior. We have a deliverer. We have a healer. We have a provider. 
I tell you one of the best stories. <laughs> a young lady named Jan Crouch. Uh, on a, she she's on a, another TV uh, Christian broadcast, and but her testimony was so blessed my soul. She was diagnosed with cancer years ago, uh, and 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 they was talking about giving her chemo, giving her and having surgery, try to cut it out. And she said, "No, I know Jesus as my healer." Oh, glory to God! Oh, honey. she now watch. When they brought her, she really had the cancer in her body. She had an abundance. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. She had an abundance that Jesus was her healer. Oh, oh, glory to God. See, when the devil come, there should be an abundance that Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my provider. The money will come. The Lord will provide. The Lord will make a way. Instead of running to worry and stress and wondering and wavering and, 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 and telling everybody, you you know, how about just acknowledging who Jesus is and what does he mean to me? She's still living today. She still was living. She's still, as I'm doing this broadcast, she's still living. Jesus is my hero. Jesus is my provider. Jesus is my wisdom. And then when I don't know what to do, I know who to run to. I know who's my strength every day. I, oh, glory to God. I tell you, say, whenever trouble knock on my door, I always know that the Lord is my helper. The Lord is the one who will deliver me out of this. For in every situation in my life, since June 30, 1988, the Lord has delivered me out of every trouble that I've ever faced. And he will yet deliver me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And through the blood... You know, people, man, they be talking about the blood of Jesus. You ought to worship the Lord. Come on, just lift your hands up with me right now. And let's thank Jesus. Let's thank God for the blood of Jesus. Let's thank God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for Jesus giving his life for us. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking my sins away. Thank you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, when you begin to thank him for that blood, I'm telling you, the devil's got a lot of trouble trying to mess with you. See, see, they, they, they don't have much to work with when you've been forgiven. Amen. Now, let me, let me get ready uh, to, to close. In Isaiah uh, 43, uh, verse 25, I, even I, and he that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. The word says in Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I, am he, this is God, that blotted out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Now listen, in Jesus, when he died on the cross, listen, he took our sins away once and for all. And why did, why did God send Jesus to do that? Did he do it for your sake or his sake? Saints, when Jesus died on the cross, it was not our will for Jesus to die. Jesus came and died because of the will of the Father. We get to inherit the blessing from that. But Jesus died on that cross doing the will of the Father. So when God forgives you, in the blood of Jesus, it is for his sake so that in Jesus, God can put all of us in Jesus where God can reach and bless us every day. And that's why it's so important that your heart be established on loving one another as Jesus loved you on that cross. And, and, and see, then, then you go and as, as, as Jesus loved you, See, for, for God's sake, so that you and I could be blessed. Then when you forgive, when you love your enemies, you are not doing this for their sake. You are doing this for your sake. 
so that you will stay in a place where your faith will work, where that you, you will love them, you will bless them, you do good to them, and you will pray for them, who despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? So God do not want you to be overcome by the evil that people do to us. God want us to overcome that evil with how Jesus loved us on that cross. Well, my time's up. I'm going to pick this back up tomorrow. <clears throat> and I'm going to get in this a little bit deeper. Amen. God, I tell you, I got blessed today. Jesus is my healer. Amen. Listen, I'm going to make this six CD uh, a series available to you. It's part two of an established heart. And this is, this, if you order this by itself for a love gift for $30 or more to help our ministry. But if I'm doing this week another special. If you order these today, uh, then we'll let you have these for $40. And then I'll give you a free copy if you ask for my book, God's Grace Explained. So order these today, make your checks and money orders to Jesus is to answer ministries. Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And Saints, this right here will change your life. So order them. Also, you can go to robscareministry.org and use your credit card. Amen. And then I'll pay the postage and hand it, and we'll get them right out to you. So order them today. I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church, a church uh, that is alive and God is moving. So our service times on the screen, 9 o'clock Sunday school, 10 o'clock regular service and 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursdays. We invite you all to come. Also, we stream all our services live. And so if you're lost, if you're hurting, bound, addicted, or if you're hungry for truth, if you're not hungry for truth, our church ain't for you. But if you're hungry, and you want to know Jesus more. And you want to walk in more light than you've ever walked in before. Then you come. You will absolutely grow spiritually. You'll learn things. I tell you that will bless your life. Also, I want to thank my friends and partners. Thank you so much for helping me uh, and helping the broadcast, helping us do production. Thank you uh, for supporting us to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. You know what I'm teaching. You know it's been a blessing to you. So pray about helping us. And I know that God is going to continue to rich, richly bless you. Our ministry is good ground. And so thank you for helping us. Amen. I love you and I appreciate you. Don't forget you can go to robertscaleministry.org and use your credit card to give online. Well, my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. Jesus has a minister on Pastor Rob said, remember how Christ loved you on the cross. But live in that love toward one another. Have a blessed day in Jesus. Stay in his love. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.